the Apostle Paul preached the gospel, he especially emphasized that believers are counted righteous by grace and not works. Today we'll see what he means on The Bible Brief. Okay, this episode and the next one are going to wrap up the portion of this jog through dedicated to the letters of the church that we find in the New Testament. We're barely scratching the surface of the depths of what's in these letters, but what we've tried to do is pick some of the most important points that can help you as you read the letters for yourself. We've spoken about the law that God gave Israel and the righteousness of God and the gospel. And today, we'll be looking at the relationship between grace, faith, and works. We've spent a considerable amount of time on the podcast talking about the relationship between faith and righteousness. We've said that believing in Jesus is the means by which we can receive the righteousness of God. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, so we also believe God and it's counted to us as righteousness. We believe God's words in the gospel, and in believing, God counts his own righteousness to us. This is an amazing thing, and it's something that we could dwell on for a long time. But we're going to move on from this concept to something else that's emphasized in the letters of the New Testament. Today we're going to discuss the relationship between grace, works, and wages. All terms that we'll need to properly define before we move into explaining the relationship between them. First, we'll define grace. Grace is simply this, God's charitable kindness. You can think of this as God's disposition to express His love even when humans don't deserve it. Grace is simply God's charitable kindness. Next is the term works. Works can refer to two things that are often mixed together in the New Testament. Works can refer to works of the law, which is obedience to the written law that God gave the nation of Israel. Or, works can refer simply to righteous acts, like helping someone in a time of need. In any case, we can just think of works as good things that people do. Finally, we have wages. You probably have an understanding of this concept already. When you go to work, you work and then get paid, you've received wages for your work. Wages are the owed payment for work completed. When you work, you're owed payment by your company and they are in debt to you until they pay you your wages. Okay. So we have grace, which is simply God's charitable kindness. We have works, which are the good things that people do. And we have wages, which are the owed payment for work completed. Simple concepts, but critical for our discussion. Now, as we move through Paul's letter to the church in Rome, he begins a discussion around these concepts and expands on the discussion in a different letter to a church in a city called Ephesus. Ephesus would be found in the modern country of Turkey. So we're going to start in the book of Romans and then move over to the book of Ephesians in this episode as we discuss these concepts. Now, as we look at our first section in the book of Romans, keep in mind that Paul is extending one big discussion through much of the letter. We're going to hop into the middle of Paul's discussion after he's talked about the righteousness of God received by faith. He's shifted to a discussion of who gets the credit for this transaction of sorts. Now, Outside of Abraham's faith, it turns out that Abraham also did some good works. And Paul here clarifies that it wasn't the good works that made Abraham righteous. No, he says, it was through his faith in God that he received righteousness. Listen to Paul. He says this in the book of Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our Jewish forefather? For if Abraham was declared righteous by works... He has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And then Paul clarifies what he means by what he just said. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his wages. And to the one who does not work, but believes in God who declares righteous the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. And then Paul quotes a song that was written by King David that says this, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered, 
Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Paul here is making this argument. He says something like, Abraham did some good things that we can read about in the book of Genesis. But when you read about the good things that Abraham did, don't think that it was because of these things that Abraham was declared righteous by God. If it was because of good works that Abraham was declared righteous, then God owed Abraham for his good works. But the Bible expressly says that Abraham was declared righteous because of faith, not because of the good things that he did. And then to underline the point, he uses another famous faithful man in the Bible to demonstrate that he knew this truth too. He quotes David's song where King David says that the happy and blessed man is the one who has had his sins forgiven, atoned for, and uncounted by God. Said another way, blessed is the man who God counts righteous, even though he doesn't deserve it. Now there's a term that we commonly have for receiving something that we've not earned. If we've earned it, it's a wage, but if we haven't earned it, it's a gift. Something from God's charitable kindness, what the Bible calls grace. And one of the Apostle Paul's big points is underlined in the fact that Abraham did not earn the righteousness from God. It underlines that righteousness from God is a gift that is received through faith. Christians don't earn the gift of righteousness because no one earns a gift. Instead, through faith, we receive this gift of righteousness from God by His grace, His charitable kindness. Paul, in his letter to the church in Ephesus, says it like this, which I'll lightly amplify. You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following Satan, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of God's righteous wrath, like the rest of mankind. Paul here is basically saying that prior to believing in Jesus, everyone is unrighteous and subject to the death penalty for our sins. Then he says this, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with Him, and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Paul says that because of God's mercy and love, despite our unrighteous deadness in our sins, God makes us alive with Christ when we believe in him with our spiritual deadness gone and new spiritual life in its place. And he clarifies again so that we don't miss it. He says, By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not something you did by good works. Now, listener, I need you to listen closely right now. Because if you miss this, you will miss the message of the Bible. You'll miss the message of the gospel and you'll miss the character of God. It's this. God saves us as a gift, and we cannot, no matter what we do, deserve the salvation and righteousness that God has provided. Nothing, no amazing righteous act, not selling all you have, not feeding the hungry, not performing miracles, not anything you could ever do could make God owe you the salvation as a wage for the work that you did. God's salvation of people is a gift that is born out of His love for the world, out of His charitable kindness. His gospel tells the world about this amazing gift, and in having faith, we receive this gift from God. When someone believes in Jesus, they have done nothing except admit their need for God to save them and trust in God to save them according to what He has said. Faith, it turns out, is like a pipe through which water flows. Faith itself can't quench the thirst of someone. The water, like the grace of God, 
is the solution to the thirsty person. The pipes are just the means by which we receive the water. Faith in Jesus is the means by which we receive the gift of God's righteousness because of his charitable kindness. Okay, so let's review the three main takeaways. One, Abraham was not counted righteous by his good works, and neither are we. Two, Abraham was made righteous by God's grace through faith, and this is a gift from God, not wages from God. And three, God giving this gift of righteousness is born out of his grace, his charitable kindness and love to a world that didn't deserve his love, but he gave it anyway. Now, these three takeaways will lead to our final discussion from the letters of the New Testament that we'll continue with tomorrow. We're going to talk about something very important that people tend to be confused about when they read the Bible. Next time, we'll be discussing the role of good works. If they don't earn us righteousness, If they don't earn us favor with God, what good are good works? Thanks for listening to The Bible Brief. Are you enjoying the podcast? Leave us a five-star review on your podcast app. It will help people discover The Bible Brief and be exposed to the life-changing story and message of the Bible. Thank you for helping us grow. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2022.